Hi there, welcome to Town Talks. Now I'm going to be doing a Yu-Gi-Oh video. This is of a deck profile of a new deck which has come out, which has been taking all of the regionals by storm. Um, it's incredible. It is the Ritual Beasts. Um, they are tier zero, effectively. They are uh, up there with Necroz, Clifford, BA, all of the big decks. This one can compete so well. Um, it's probably one of the better decks. This and Necroz I would class as the two strongest decks at the moment. Um, this isn't the competitive build. My friend of mine that I'm borrowing this deck off doesn't actually have the full competitive build. It's missing staples such as Shared Ride, Mistake, um, Vanities. It's missing a few big cards from the deck, but mostly it's there. I have done some tweaks myself, so um, it's got some, a couple of little tech cards I really like to use. And it's just quite an interesting deck to run. Um, I'll go straight into the deck profile. There's not much I can say without actually showing the cards. So, jumping straight into it. Um, I'll go through the main deck first, and I'll explain the plays which can be made with the extra deck. Uh, first up, we run three of the... This is probably the main tamer you're going to be looking for. The Ritual Beast Tamer um, Elder. Uh, this, this card allows you to do an extra normal summon in your turn. The fact that it's a normal summon is very important the fact, uh, because it's not a special summon from your hand. If it was a special from your, summon from your hand, it wouldn't be very good, but the fact that it's a normal summon is really good for the deck. It makes you be able to so many plays. This, combined with one other card, allows you to make more plays than I even thought possible when I first started playing the deck. Uh, also running two Lara. We run two of each of the other Beast Tamers, mostly because they do a special summon rather than uh, counting it as a normal summon. Uh, this is Lara. When she's normal summoned, you can special summon from your graveyard one Ritual Beast card. Um, that's, it's a cool effect, the fact that it can special summon and stuff, but it kind of kills your players because all of the Ritual Beast cards, this is every single one, can only be special summoned once per turn outside of the fusions. Um, next, we also have Ritual Beast Tamer Wen. This card's really good. Uh, it special summons one card from your Banish Zone. Uh, I'll explain why that's important and the fact that it's from your Banish Zone a bit later on. But they, uh, this deck entirely revolves around going in and out of the Banish Zone with Contact Fusion. Right, we'll now go on to the Beasts. The Beasts are the next big part of the deck. Um, this is Canahawk. I originally thought this card was really bad when I first saw it. I didn't realise just how amazing it was until I started playing the deck. Um, once per turn, like this is once per turn while this is face up on the field. So if it gets removed from the field and gets brought back to it, you can do its effect again. You can banish one card from your deck, and in two, t in two standby phases time, you can add that card to your hand. You don't care about the adding it to your hand, that's a precaution in case you have to. You do it because this is a Banish a Ritual Beast card, so it's Banish. So you can access that card from your while well, it is Banished. This, is, this effect is really important, and I'll explain why when we get to the combos for the deck. Also running free Apelio. Um, this card's incredible. Uh, once per turn. Same same as with Canahawk, you can banish one Ritual Beast card from your graveyard. That's Ritual Beast card from your graveyard. This is really cool for late game plays because you can do that, then contact Fusion this out, bring it, then bring it back out again to banish again. The reason why it's important, it then adds for each card it banishes by this effect per turn, it adds 500 attack and defense, which is really, really, really important as you get so much power out of this card. Um, one of the key cards does loot isn't affected by the power game because of its card effect, but it's really important for the deck to run it. Um, this is something which, I'm, which is at free at the moment just because I haven't got hold of the um, card from the, from the previous set, Rampengu. Uh, I would prefer to be running two Rampengu, one of this, but them for breaks, this is what I've got. Um, Patol, uh, this is Petalfin, uh, prefer it's called Petalfin from OCG, but it's the fact you can banish a Ritual Beast card from your hand, bounce a card on the field, back, well, a card on your opponent's field, back to their hand. That's important. You can 
basically control the game with this card. You control what your opponent does. This is something that I mean, next up something which is teched in while we while I wait for the pendulum to come out. This is card card day, it's card card day. Not a lot to say. It's there while we wait for the pendulum for the pendulum. Right, now we'll go into the spells. There's a lot of spells because this deck is very spell reliant. Let's try and get uh, act, deal with the big outs to this deck in particular. Um, I'll start by showing you the special the quick play spell. This is called Ritual Beast Spawn. Uh, running it at three, you have to run this card at three. It's incredible because of the speed that all the decks run at the moment you need a way to be able to OTK um, this OTK is for you you sp because of the way contact fusion works you can detach during your battle phase so you can split back into material during your battle phase this then allows you to refuse and attack again with the same monster effectively you get so many plays also you can diffuse uh, then refuse into the in indestructible monster during your opponent's turn which allows you to do incredible amounts of combos and get around so many things like they dark hole you and you have two monsters out you would chain two of these and s then chain the effects of them to sp uh, of your fusion monsters to split them apart and then you suddenly manage to get out to uh, Ulti Patolfin, which is basically, it can't be destroyed by card effects. You you just out what they're doing. Um, next, I've got a lot of one-offs in here, but this is I have reasons for them. Um, this is quite an interesting one. Soul Release. This is a tech choice, as I'm missing some cards anyway. Um, it's really quite an interesting card because of the f massive graveyard reliance in, of most decks at the moment. You play against BA, you remove their big big play cards. You play against Necroz, you can remove their Jinn before they can Jinn lock you properly. You play against... oh well, you can just remove the big big play cards. Doesn't really do anything against Clifford's Big Whip, you can do stuff against other decks. Next up, Snatch Seal, Snatch Seal, Snatch Seal. OP card, it shouldn't be become unbanned. Book of Moon, really good card. Flip a card face down, get around the lock. Pot of Dichotomy. Um, almost all your cards are different types. So it's basically put three of them back into your deck when they are in a point when you can't get at them, which is effectively your graveyard is a zone which you don't access very, very well. So putting them back from your graveyard back into your deck is very important. Um, it's just good for the deck. Next up, I come to some more of the spells which have more of. They, they were they were quite important. The fact there's more knobs of them, but three MST. It's the current meta. Three MST is important. Popping Clifford staff, popping the vanities, etc., and two dark hole. The, the ability to board wipe very important. Um, onto the traps. Um, running three ritual beast steeds. This is incredible um, for each of your ritual beast monsters on the field destroy one monster on the field up to that number so you can activate it and pop loads of cards but the main thing is you can activate this then chain your uh, contact defusion and then pop t two cards that's quite cool you can just wipe your opponent's field like that just straight up wipe their field and it's just ridiculously good. Also, uh, I've only got one of this at the moment, but that's just because I haven't managed to get a hold of any more copies. The other Ritual Beast trap, Ritual Beast Ambush, uh, activate it, special summon a Ritual Beast and a Ritual Beast Tamer from your Banish or Graveyard. One of the only cards that can access the Graveyard apart from um, Lara. This is really cool in combination with, with Steeds because you can effectively get six card, uh, no, four cards monsters out from only having one fusion out to then banish uh, to then destroy four cards that's really good uh, next up these are two cards which I want which would stay in this deck anyway uh, bottomless and compulse very standard 
staple cards. Um, these are s next up are cards which I want to swap for Vanities and a Macrocosmos. Um, Venus Chain, Solemn Warning. These should be Vanities. You want to have three Vanities, but they're control cards, you run them anyway. And this is di uh, different dimension ground. Macrocosmos for a turn for monsters, so D fish for a turn. You prefer, prefer it to be Macrocosmos. Would have much more control over the game that way. But yeah, then some breaks. Next into the more interesting cards. This is the extra deck. The extra deck's really cool for this deck. Um, start off with Ritual Beast Patolfin, this is quite a simple one. Um, something I didn't mention, all of the Ritual Beast monsters, the no well the spiritual beasts, the uh, non-fusion monsters have a combined attack and defense of 2000 um, if I show you just straight up Patolfin it has 0 and 2000 Apelio has 1800 and 200 it's a trait which they all have very important um, because it also translates onto the fusions the multi fusions have a to total attack and defense of 3000. Why this is important is just, it, it's a very lore based thing for them, it's how they came up with the designs for the cards. Um, this one in particular, it can't be destroyed by card effects, and it's contact fusion between a ritual beast and a ritual, a spiritual beast and a ritual beast tamer. Um, good card. The fact it can't be destroyed by card effects and the fact that it's a huge wall, most things can't get over it. It's like it can get be gotten over by a killer, and that's about it in current meta. Next up, free can of hog. This card wins you games. It may look weak with only one four hundred with one six hundred defense, but it's the the playmaking piece of the deck. Its ability, choose two Ritual Beast cards from your Banish Zone and put them into your graveyard and then add a card from a Ritual Beast card from your deck to your hand. <coughs> Why would you want these cards out of your Banish Zone and into your graveyard where you can't access them? Well, the fact thing is you can declare the two targets which will be going into your graveyard first with this card's effect. Then chain his effect to special summon uh, to return it to your extra deck to decontact fusion. Target one of the two targets which you were sending to the graveyard, and you will special summon that instead of it going to the graveyard. If you target both, you don't get the search effect, but if you only target one, you still get the search effect because a remove from play target is still going to the graveyard. So basically, you nullify some of the costs, and you would literally send a ritual beast which has already been special summoned back to the graveyard, or a banished spell or trap that's ritual beast anything like that, something which you're not going to want to access, and you base effectively get a search for the cost of one card being moved from your banish to your um, graveyard. I see no downside to this card. It's too good. Um, it allow You can do so many chains with this card, and you get so much advantage from it. It's a free advantage card, effectively. Next up, the a beat stick, this is Ultiopelio. Um, when it attacks, it's unaffected by other card effects. Um, it isn't affected by the normal normal Apelio power boost while it's attacking, because that's another, another card effect. But if they try and activate anything at all, like if they try to Phoenix Chain it, it's unaffected by the effect of Phoenix Chain um, until the end of its attack, at which point it can defuse anyway. Um, it can't be mirror forced, it can't be black sonic, it can't be nothing can do it, can touch it unless it's more powerful. Yeah, that that's about it. Um it's quite a good card, but yeah. Um just because I've got the cards, one photon strike bouncer, yeah, effect notification, and this card's big. Harpy's pet phantasmal dragon. Um three Level 4 win monsters into an, a card that cannot be targeted for an attack or card effect that can attack your opponent directly for 2k three turns in a row. Big card. This is 
a card which you drop and it is a wall that your opponent can't get through they can't fiendish chain it they can't break through skill it they can't touch this card uh, it can't be targeted that that is what makes this card so good and you can get the material out for that really easily um, other than that I don't have the rest of my extra deck because you don't need it you only need the fusions and your harpy dragons and the deck will run so well so yeah that's about it for the deck um, pink dolphin too good um, yeah tell me what you think of it I recommend you try it because the pink dolphins are too strong and they will win you the game uh, yeah, in all seriousness this is a tier 1 deck you should play it get back to me on how you fared with it etc etc and that's about all I can say about it this is Taron I've talked about Yu-Gi-Oh this is something I don't normally do and it's actually a meta deck um, I hope you enjoyed this peace out just like comment subscribe etc you know see you around